All right. So this is the uh, navigation workshop for June 8th, 2023. And what we're going to do is go through um, a PowerPoint that I conver converted a PDF to a PowerPoint just today. So hopefully it works. And what I'm hoping to do is if anybody has any questions, please jump in. I don't mind interruptions. So um, I am going to share screen. Where is share screen on here? Usually at the bottom. I know it's on the bottom, but where? It's it's green on my screen for what that's worth. Yeah. There it is, right there. Thank you. Okay, so um, okay, so I am going to start this from the beginning. And can everybody see it? Yes. Yeah. Yes. Yep. Yeah. Right. Um, so I'm going to go through a lot today. Now, how do I make this less big? Hmm. Hmm. That's weird. Does anybody know how to do that? What are you trying to do? What do you want to make well, it? it it's um, spilling behind the pictures. Not on my screen. Not on, on my screen. screen. Oh, really? Okay. Well, it looks fine. Fine. Okay, good. So, um, so you know, this is on navigation. I'm going to go through a whole bunch of things tonight. So I'm going to go through relatively quickly. Again, please... Um, stop me and ask questions if along the way some of the navigation rules are you supposed to post a that's a nice typo post a lookout and watch out for the dangers maintain a safe speed and avoid a collision um so we, we're recreational sailors so we're going to be talking about you know what we we do which is slightly different from what, what the commercial people do um, and I certainly don't mind discussing what the commercials do. We're going to talk about that in Boston Harbor. We have a lot of commercial boats, so we have to, um, navigate around them at times. Most of us have a VHF radio and I always monitor 16. Um, Frank, what do you, do you monitor 16, Frank, or what do you monitor? Uh, 16 and 13. 16 and 13, yeah. Yeah, I sometimes do that. How about you, Sue Ellen? When you're sailing, when do you, what do you? Uh, Usually 16. But... Yeah. And Meryl? Those two plus going off to usually around 72, could be 78, 6, 71 to reach somebody personally. That's a good point. Yeah, When you're on a cruise with numerous other boats, you typically choose a um, a working channel you know, 71, 72, 68, something like that. Um, and so that when you go, you don't have to uh, say pick a channel, you just go to it. And that's really good if you've got three, four, five, ten 10 boats going. Um, commercial boats usually work on channel 13. And we'll go over some of that in a little bit. Um, in a crossing situation, if you're in a busy harbor, such as Boston, um, or you know, many others, Newport, and, um, New Bedford, and the Cape Cod Canal and all that, it's very often prudent to um, indicate, you'll listen to them and they'll they'll tell each other which way they're going. And it's also worthwhile to tell the, those people what to him. Um, so, if I say I'm going to pass you on one, what does that mean? Going to leave you on port side? Right. I'm going to, you know, I, I like to call it, I am going to turn to right. And, and Frank is right. Yeah, I'm going to keep you on my port side. Um, 
And similar, if I say I'm going to pass you on two, that means I'm going to turn to my left and I'll leave, leave you on my starboard side. Mm -hmm. So again, I'm going through here quickly. Please um, ask any questions. So when I say pass you on one, that's the equivalent of one short blast. And what uh, has one syllable and one short blast has one, and one, one, one blast has you know, one. So and two is starboard. Um, what does three blasts, short blast mean? It's right I'm back. operating the stern. Yeah, back. Right. And five short blasts. I like some of the sailing um, areas in Boston. You are going to die. <laughs> That's you a always, Yeah, you always hear that with the Bermuda boat when it's backing out of the um, channel. No, they Boston. do three. I, oh, I'm sorry. I, well, you know what it is? Yeah, you always hear them when they, they've got sailboats crossing them. That's when you hear the fire. Yeah, well, that's when they do. Yeah, yeah. typically when um, like a ferry boat or a large ship is that, you know going to be backing out, they'll do one long blast, which means um, that, you know, I am leaving the vessel. Then, um, then they'll do three short blasts. That means I'm backing up. So you walk. Yeah. Wonk, wonk, wonk. That means I'm um, leaving and I'm backing up. So uh, Frank just mentioned this. Okay, one short blast on the right here. We, we're going to, to the right and two blasts, we're going to the left. Head on passing. The standard way of passing somebody is just like in a car, you pass port to port. Uh, but it's perfectly acceptable to pass, um, and that would be, uh, I'm passing you on to, um, you'd, you'd be passing uh, port, you know, starboard, starboard. Now, it's amazing how often amateur boaters try to get out of the way, which is great if you get out of the way well early enough. If you see something, somebody coming at you, and you want to get out of the way, you don't want to be in the way, even though you have the right of way. If you're going to make a change, of course, do so early. Um, you know, if you're the stand on vessel, which means you have the right of way, you're supposed to keep going straight. You're not supposed to be changing course. Um, the give way vessel is the one that has to make the maneuver. Um, who is the uh, general rule of thumb, who is the give way vessel or the stand on vessel? It's kind of like the same as driving when you come to an intersection. Well, that's true, but I'm just talking the vessels itself. It turns out the overall is the most maneuverable boat yeah. has to get out of the way of the least maneuverable boat. Mm -hmm. um, now, there are many things that means more and less maneuverable. If you're a sailboat or a ship, you may have to stay in the channel, whereas a small powerboat may be able to get out of it. A powerboat can go around a sailboat or a ship quite easily, um, and a canoe or something like that can do it even easier. Um, but... You know, you can't say, hey, I'm a sailboat, big Mr. Ship in the middle of the channel, get out of my way. That's when you're going to get five blasts. Mm. All right, going quickly on to navigational marks. There are two types of navigation A's. <clears throat> There's buoys and beacons. Buoys float. Um, and beacons are fixed. Some of them have the lights on top. Some of them are, you know, conical or cylindrical or a sea buoy. Now, a nun buoy has a cylindrical top, as we know, and the flat top uh, looks like a can and is a can. So, again, the beacons are permanently fixed, most commonly to the bottom. And a beacon that has a light on it is considered uh, called just a light. 
one without a light is called a day beacon. So when you talk about a day beacon, that's what you're looking at. It's affixed to the bottom and it doesn't have a light on. Um, although I know a lot of people will see day beacon, uh, you know, lighted day beacons out there and call it a day beacon. It's, it's really a light. I got a question. This is Dan. Yeah. Uh, so is a day marker the same thing as a day beacon? Yes. Okay. All right, because I was trying to find one the other day and I couldn't see it on the chart, but then we found it, but it was sitting up on a little island. Yeah, yeah, and we're going to go through a bunch of those um, in there. Here they are. Here are some of the things. Um, so a red lighted buoy is, notice the symbol down in the corner, it's got a little magenta circle around it and, and R quote for end quote QR. Anybody have a guess what that all of that says? A quick red. A quick red uh, is what? Blink. You're it's right. Light. It's blank, right? Blank. I'm blank. sorry. Yeah, the, it's light, right? And what color is a buoy? A red. red. Because it says R. And um, and what's the name of the buoy? Uh, four. 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 Right. The the name of the buoy we sometimes we call it number and like in that case, um, but look on the far right there, the name of the buoy is CF, and, oh. and so we can't call it a number; it's a name. But it's always in quotes. Notice the color of that one on the right is they call it red over green. Notice that the symbol is red on top and green on the bottom. Um, notice it also has got a little circle underneath it. That means it's floating. I'll show you something later on um, on a beacon that is fixed. It'll have a little dot there, not a little circle. The reason a circle, that's a position's approximate. It's funny. When you do an overlay on your radar, on the charts, all of a sudden you'll see the little magenta marks of all the buoys are all a little bit off and then six hours later they're a little bit off the other direction and when you re realize you know when you start thinking about it it's because they're all attached to chains and you know they move kind of the length of the chain so um i have a question on the on the qr how come it doesn't say like how many seconds if you're navigating at night QR means quick red. That means it's uh, one second or less. One second or less. Okay. Yeah. Quick quick is one second or less. Okay. Yeah. Good question. Okay. Here's one, the red light on the uh, left. It's a beacon, a lighted day beacon. So we'll call it a light. Um, and I'm not sure if you can read the the symbol down the bottom, um, but it says FLR 4S. What does uh, that mean? Flashing red every four seconds. Right, flashing red every four seconds. Um, 36FT6M, quote, four, unquote. What does that mean? 36 feet high can be seen four miles, or is it, yeah. Yeah, four, uh, no, four is a, is a number, is a name. Yeah, four right. is its name. Oh, yeah, but the four miles is, I think that's it, it, I, I think it says six miles. It's six miles, oh, I think. Okay, I misread it, yeah. It's yeah, I think, yeah, it's tough to read. Yeah. And, um, yeah, okay. So, now, don't get confused. I just heard at my yacht club uh, a few days ago, somebody was confused because they said FR. And they kept looking for it to flash. What, what, what does FR mean? Uh, fixed red, right? It means fixed, not flashing. No, F F is means fixed, and F L means flash. Okay. So that's a little trick that uh, you know we can all get screwed up with that. Pretty so, easily. so if is, is fixed means it's a day marker. No, no, fixed. no that's the light. So the, a oh. light that is. Fixed is just stays on. It's like you're oh, okay. 
your running lights are fixed lights. Hopefully they're okay. fixed lights. That's another thing I checked today is my all my running lights work. So okay. um and um any questions on this slide? I just want to be perfectly clear if you go back to that slide, Craig. So you go between the pilings? <laughs> of course. <laughs> of course. <laughs> Only on your boat. <laughs> in Boston paddle? Harbor, that happens at 2 o'clock in the morning. It's <laughs> <I know. laughs> oh, gosh. <laughs> what a wise guy. <laughs> Okay, so here, here we are, a little bit blown up. So what is a buoy? It's called aid. They're all aids to navigation. Um, and this is a, a type, it's a lighted buoy. Um, when you see it, uh, the symbol on the thing, notice that this is red over green. Don't say green over red because it's not green over red. Um, on this one, which is the preferred channel color? Red. 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 The top color is the main channel. Um, and notice the symbol on there. Notice again, it's got a circle on it and it's got a magenta uh, symbol on it. What's the magenta mean on it? It's lit. It's no light. It's lighted. Doesn't, the magenta doesn't mean anything about the color of the light. It just means it's lighted. So R, G, quote, B, unquote, what does that mean? Well, his name is B. It's yeah. named B. That's a red, green. It's red and green. And it's red special. over green, right? Or red and green, right? And the name of B. 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 Now, B. Now we're getting a little bit screwy here. F, L, 2 plus 1. So it must be 3, right? No. no. Flash no. twice and then once. I'm sorry, say it again. Double flash plus one. Yeah. Two okay. And then alternating, alternating flash. No, well, it's, it's yeah, it, flash. it flashes. It's a, it's a group flash. Yeah. Um, it flashes blink, blink, blink. So yeah. it flashes two, then one. How often does it do that? Every six, six seconds. Six seconds. Every six seconds. And what color is the light? Red. 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 Right. Now, so uh, I got a question, Craig. Uh, so the circle there is magenta, right? When you see a teardrop shaped magenta on the chart, that's under the under. Does that is that just a different charting method by no? That is that is a typically lighthouse. a lighthouse. Lighthouse. A, a, a bigger. So that uh, I think I have a symbol on here. Gee, all my charts have teardrops everywhere. A lot of lighthouses. Where are you? <laughs> yeah, sometimes it's a lighted uh, lighted beacon. So I think I, I'm coming up to one of these in a few minutes. So I'll, I'm going to pass on that right now. Okay, but the um, circle, but the circle within the magenta means fixed there or means uh, fixed. It's a, no, it means it's a floating aid. Oh, it's, okay. It's a, it means it's somewhere in that circle. The ah. dot means it's a fixed symbol. Where it is, it's not going to move, no matter how how bad the tide is. Okay. This uh, floating aid, floating buoy will move back and forth. And again, as I said a few minutes ago, uh, the first time I looked at my radar with the overlay on my chart, I said, gee, all of those buoys are mischarted. Then that afternoon, I came back on the same route and gee, all those buoys are mischarted in the opposite direction. <laughs> and I realized that I was I was looking at the current was sucking the the buoys in one direction in the morning and the other direction in the afternoon. I said, ah, okay, it's the approximate location. So, okay, again, the light, the letter or the name. The they used to flunk people on the uh, captain's license. Um, it's not reflective panel it's retroflective so um hmm. does anybody care no um, <laughs> where what are you talking about retro oh retroflective retroflective is 
when you see it on um, somebody's running vest or jacket or something like that, you see how it shows up really bright and um, reflective. A mirror is reflective. But the thing is, is if I hit, have a mirror facing directly towards you, you can see your light. But if I turn it sideways a little bit, that your light will shine over there. Retroflective, it's got uh, thousands of little tiny prisms in it, and it makes the, the light shine back to, from the direction it came. Retro, like a 70s mirror ball. Okay, yeah. That's the way I think of it. <laughs> so, all right, going through this again quickly, the aid color. On the symbol down there is red over green, or red and green, as somebody pointed out. And the symbol on it says red, green, the name B. And uh, again, the magenta is the lighted. And again, it's flash two plus one colors, light colors red, and it flashes every second. The group. So <clears throat> it's not six seconds between lights it's six seconds for the entire things so i'll go blink blink pause blink mm -hmm. and, it'll, and then it'll pause and then if you started counting one one thousand at the first blink it will start in, in six seconds later oh. hmm. <clears throat> here's a busy area anybody have any idea where this is yep yeah Yep. Yeah, President Rhodes. Nimble. Um, ooh, this didn't come up very good. I blew it up too much, I'm afraid. <clears throat> but hopefully you can see it. What kind of a buoy is this? It's a nun. What? It's a colored red buoy. Um, uh, and it's if you can read it in there, it says N8. So it's a nun. Number its name is eight. It's a nun. It's red. What's the thirteen mean? Yeah. Yeah. That depth. depth. I'm sorry. Yes, correct. Yeah. And same thing with fourteen. Um, I guess see, I blew these up a little bit too much. I apologize. Um, okay. So, what does the? We just. I think everybody's got this now. F L R two point five S. What does that mean? Flashing red every three seconds. Right, good. All right. <clears throat> and the name of this buoy? Six. Six. Okay. Well, which is red? The, the light or the color of the buoy? Color of the buoy. Both. 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 The, the flash is red, right? It's oh, it's, red. Yeah, it's also red. Yeah. Trick, qu trick question. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay. Again, reading the symbols. G, quote, five, unquote, uh, F, L, G, four, S. So. Flashing it, green, four uh, seconds. Green, four. Right, it's flashing green, four seconds. It's, some people might call it a can, but it's not a can because a can is the shape of a can. Um, it would be, a lot of people will call it a green sea buoy because it's got the, um, um, let's see where we had, uh, you know, that's a sea buoy as opposed to a, um, the, the middle one here is the can and the one on the right is a nun. We always call them structural buoys. Structural buoys, I believe are the fixed buoys, aren't they? Uh, I always call them structurals. Uh, oh, okay. Uh, but I might be wrong. Uh, that's um, I don't know where I learned that, but I always know. Okay. Well, plus, those are lighted buoys are all main channel buoys. They're yeah. no, they're, not no. That's not true. No. Mid channel. No main channel buoys. Oh, main channel. Oh, I'm sorry. Oh, the secondary channel, which which is your cans and nuns. Seven minutes. More or less, I I think there's exceptions to that rule. Uh, it might be. Okay. Now, on this one, what does that little magenta circle mean again? It's a approximate location. Lighted, lighted buoy. Lighted. No, the magenta is, that means that it's a lighted buoy. And what color is the light on this buoy? Green. 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 
All right. All right. Um, here's one of those little exclamation points that uh, somebody was asking about. Um, what type of aid is this? Lighthouse. It's a lighthouse. Where does it say uh, lighthouse on it? How tall is it? 87 feet. 87 feet. Um, above what? Above mean, mean oh. high water. Mean, mean, mean high water. What does um, 11 mean? What does that mean? 11. What's the 1 1? What does what mean? That's, a, that's distance 11. you can see it, right? 11 miles. No, it's, it's the distance you can see it from. The 11. Oh, the 11, 11 M. Yeah, okay, that's a good question. What does 11 M mean? It's the, the distance, distance you can see it from. Right. You, you, you can see this. It's designed to be seen for 11 miles. And how often is this a fix or a flashing light? Flashing. Six flashing. seconds. How often? Six, Six seconds. seconds. Okay. So uh, the, the letters H O R N, does that mean it's just horn there? Is a horn there? It's a horn. Yeah. Okay. That's exactly it. So a... I was trying to find on the charts the other day in, in the term lighthouse or uh, L T H O S, but it on the on the legend on the back of the chart but when i looked at the front i couldn't find it so the only reason i, I know it's a lighthouse is because it's at 87 feet and it's on land yeah okay that symbol and the symbol and what's the, the symbol. Symbol. Yeah, right. what's the symbol that 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 cross hatch area no no that cross hatch area is a building nearby it's the, it's the kind of the explanation the magenta um exclamation point okay is this is this based? Difficult. okay and what does red sector mean? Like a danger area. It's where the light right. will flash red instead yeah. of white. At, at night, you go uh, sailing and motoring by there. All of a sudden, it goes red. Usually, you want to pay attention. Why did the, the light that was, um, you know, well, I, I, we forgot to ask. What color is this light? It's going uh... it to be a white light. White. Right. Except it's red white. sector. Where does it say white on it? It doesn't. It doesn't. If it doesn't have a color, uh, it's a white light. So then this is a white light with a red sector? Yes. Yes. It's oh, a red. Okay. Exactly. Good Good point. Wait, what does zone, red sector mean again? I don't get. What does that mean? Danger. Danger. <laughs> look look at the depths in the area. Typically, red sector okay, means right. a, it's kind of a pay attention. Watch out. Okay. Oftentimes, they'll try to put the red sector where it starts to get shallow or there's there's something that you you really don't want to be in the red sector without knowing that why you're there. Uh -huh. it, it, it's just a quick aid that tells you. Um, and, um, and um, Now, what does it mean when it's, it says rip rap? Those are Three year large basketball pipes. sized rocks. It's right. A, it's it's a kind of like a seawall type of thing. Yeah. And then in the water there it says R K Y. Rocky. Rocky, Rocky exactly. Um now um people have sailed with me, have heard me of this um a, an old story, but what does the yellow part of the chart mean? Land. You're not going to sail there. Land. And what does the blue mean? Water. water. It's shallow shallower water. Than, the, than the white. It's relatively shallow water. And what does the white mean? Deeper water. Deep. Okay. How, how deep um, is it if it's in white versus blue? Mm -hmm. That's a trick question because it's, there's no there's no fixed line. This no. one I see there's some 16 foot. Typically it's a um, 18 foot line, but um, I see some 16 foot. So and 13. That, that must be a 12. No, no, it says 13. So yeah, that must be a 12 foot line. Yeah, yeah. There's a 12 and a 13. 13. Yeah, there it is. Yeah, yeah. So. Um, all right, any questions on this one? Okay. All right, now let's go on to go, go through the lateral aids. So um, 
the lateral aids, as Frank pointed out, are the, they mark the size of the channel, uh, typically. Some of them mark um, mid-channel, uh, some of them offshore. There's a whole bunch of different things here. I did a few of them here. Um, Red right returning is what we do in this part of the world. And that means when you're coming into a harbor, um, you keep the red buoys on the right, red on the right when you're returning. Um, red buoys have even numbers. The way I remember that is none too soon. <laughs> and none is red. And it's it's an even number, so none too soon. That's how I do it. Um, I have a mnemonic that says red left leave. Because when I turn around and all of a sudden I'm going back out of the harbor, wait a second, the red buoy is supposed to be on the right. No, wait a second. Okay, I've just changed it to red left leave. So when you're heading out of the harbor towards the open water, um, the re red aids it to the port not this and the green aids to the starboard any question on that well just just to, uh, when we're in boston harbor <clears throat> you have to remember um as you leave boston harbor and then you might be entering hingham or hull bay you know just because you're outward bound on your sailing trip doesn't mean that you're not inward bound into a harbor right yeah yeah boston harbor um um yeah you you come in through president roads and you turn left into noble channel and well wait a second which way is the buoys yeah you know it's it's yeah. it's a little bit weird so you have to be very careful you're always around around Pettix Island. Maine. around yeah. Pettix island they reverse yeah yeah Lots of different places they reverse. You really have to check them all always. Absolutely, yeah, yeah. So, all right. So the, uh, so the green colors. This is going outbound. So the green colors will be on your starboard side when you're traveling towards the open water, and the red will be on uh, starboard when you're coming from the open waters. And notice the greens are odd numbers and the reds are even numbers. So here's just a few of the typical aids that you have and the symbol on the chart. So a little green square on the chart, it says G7. That is a day beacon. It's a day beacon uh, or day marker, somebody pointed out. Um, and, um, um, but if it's a lighted day beacon, like the second one on the left there, um, it's got that little symbol because it's on a post. Notice it's got a, um, a dot rather than a circle. The third one, the can, it's got the circle. So notice the can and the and the light of day beacon the difference a little circle versus a little, little the solid dot again the solid dot means that it's a fixed and the circle means that it's floating Greg this is Dan that ellipse is there does that is that just not just on uh lighthouses but it's also on anything lighted I think I was wrong on that it's anything that's fixed there I I believe it now that I see it that way Okay. Yeah. Um, then the lighted buoy again down the bottom. The, I'm on, still on the green side, and it's a it got the magenta circle. The magenta circle is the key. If you see the magenta uh, doing it, some of these uh, red and magenta they kind of look the same here. It's you know it should be more red and magenta. Oh. So I have a question about that. So the difference between floating, I mean, they're all fixed. A floating buoy is anchored, right? So what yes, but it's it's not its position isn't a hundred percent accurate because oh, it's it on a around. Is that what you're saying? Right. Okay. Yeah, just like you know, when you're on a mooring, 
Yeah. Um, you know, gee, I'm really close to that dock right now because the wind's blowing in that direction. Wow, yeah. I'm really far away from that dock now right, right. because the current or the wind changed. Got it. Okay, here we are with the preferred channels. So this buoy, this buoy here has got the green over red. So what, which, which is it? Is this green over red? Which is that? And the preferred channel is on the on the right there. And there's mm -hmm. several symbols, uh, samples, uh, samples of them. Okay, so I, I'm confused. When you say it's it's the channel to the right. Yeah, see on the on this symbol here, um, the the green over red buoy there on right. the right side of the thing. Yeah. So what's your question? Then? If if you want to go in the preferred channel, you pretend like the buoy is this all colored exactly like the top color. Correct. So pretend that's a green buoy because that's the top color. That's so right. You, so you so keep it in port side. So in this case, I'm going, I'm going in toward land correct yes okay all right. all right red right return okay yeah and but if i want to go into that secondary channel i would treat it as a red buoy ah uh, okay all right here's some safe water marks um Notice that they're vertical stripe, not horizontal. And this one on the left here is RWN. What does the N in quote marks mean? It's its, own, its name, right? Its name is N. Yeah, it's not a nun. Hmm. And this one is unlighted. Notice the symbol above it. Um, um, is got a vertical kind of line on it. It's a little bit of at an angle, and it's but it doesn't have any magenta. But on the one on the right there has a, it's a R W N. Looks identical, right? Except it's got a magenta circle. And what's MOA mean? Is that the Morse code? Morse code A. What is Morse code A? Do anybody remember what their Morse code for A is? Dot it, dot it. Da it, da it. Okay, what is the da? Long burst of light. Right. Yeah. Short burst. Um, and um, so down the bottom is a couple of other, you know, three other ones less common around here. So these marks are, wouldn't you assume that deep water is safe water? Yes. These are called safe watermark. A lot of times um, you'll see these like a half a mile or a mile outside of a channel. And it typically is if you go right to that buoy and you know the compass course into it, um, you can hit the middle of the channel by going to that buoy and going, you know, mm -hmm. due west to due north or whatever the um, thing. And it usually is directly off it. So if you pick the right, uh, compass course from there, it'll take you into, you know, like between the buoys going into the harbor, at least for the first couple of sets of buoys. You know, once you get in there, that might change. So what does the N stand for again? That's the name of it. Just, um, what it, it just, its name is N, just like, you know, number two or three or four, the okay. name is N. Yeah, so deep water and safe water aren't the same thing, no. Right, it's safe have, water or deep water, right? Yeah, because you can have deep water in a channel, but safe water is generally indicating that you know you're out of uh, sort of a control zone for a harbor or something like that. You're not going to see right. it. You're right. Or aids to navigation way out here in safe water. Right. Yeah. It's deep water. You know the buoys should always indicate that it's deep water. Of course, what's deep water for one boat isn't deep water for another. Um, um, but yeah, safe water means you're outside, as, as Matt pointed out. It, you're out of the harbor, typically. Well, uh, is that like if we're going to go out and do some drills and uh, do some maneuvering, would we want to be in a safe water area? Is that what it means? We're, not, we're out of the channel? Um, 
first of all, you can pass on any side of a safe water buoy, right. uh, typically. And um, and yeah, if you want to take maneuvers, you know, it's not, you know, you have to worry about the current and the wind, you know, and have to worry about the depth for a while, you know, and typically for quite a while. Okay. Does that answer your question? Yeah. Okay. Special aids on my, I have a uh, PDF and I have more of these things. I thought we were going to be taking a little bit longer here, but um, special aids. Um, this is like an anchoring area. If you, if you've been in Winthrop Harbor, what we call the box is a, there's five, I think there are five um, yellow buoys and they mark the corners of the uh, designated anchorage area. And that's usually used for ships. So out near Deer Island, there's a big blocked off area, right? I'm sorry, say again? Out at the uh, southwestern end of Deer Island is the same thing? Yes, that's, that's what I'm talking about. We call that the box. Okay. Yeah. So, um, so that, and yes. So can we so can we maneuver in that area if we're going to change points of sale just for drills? Absolutely. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, that's deep water there. And you'll notice um it's amazing. You watch your depth sounder as you're going past there, and all of a sudden you go past those buoys and it goes from you know, yeah, you know, for like 40 feet down to 15 feet in very quickly. <laughs> yeah. You can almost think they dredged it. And they do have these letters A, B, C, D, typically. And notice the symbol says Y, it means it's yellow. And it says can A or none C. Um, or that they, you know, that mark, they mark A. And it's interesting, the day mark is a diamond there, but they show it as a square. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, what's the B and I forgot about that. What is a what? The, the yellow A and then there's a BN. What is the BN? Underneath it, I think. I oh, it's a day it. beacon. Oh, oh, BN is the beacon. Okay. Yeah. And the one on the right is, what does FLY mean? Flashing yellow. Flashing yellow. And again, notice that the color of the light is the color of the buoy. Red red buoys have red lights, green buoys have green lights, yellow buoys have yellow lights. Now, what is a red over green buoy if it's lighted? What color would the light be? Red, red. Red, the top, right. So that's it. So um, uh, let me, how do I get back into here? I'm trying to get back into the normal screen here and I'm not winning. Just, I think if you go back. There we are. Go back to screen share and click on it again should be. Yeah. Stop screen sharing. <clears throat> Is it still sharing on your screen? Yes. Yes. Why am I not? Trying to. Let's see. So if you go to the bottom of the screen, where oh, you on the bottom of, of your um of your computer screen where that we, we, we hit screen, screen share before. before you just hit that again. I think. Some reason. Craig, can you go back down to that green thing that says share screen? Go down to where? The the green marker that says share screen. It's across the bottom. Yeah, but uh, see, it's not on mine anymore. Yeah, go below the 
the uh, I know what you're talking about, but it, on my not coming up. No. Hmm. Oh, there it is. Top score. There, I found it. It was on the top. There. Oh, oh but of course. <laughs> Sorry about this. <laughs> So, um, so how? What do we have for questions or comments? Or it doesn't have to be about this. Uh, okay. Hmm. There's also lanes of separation. So when you're in a really big, you know, lots of big ships coming through the charters. Yeah, they they have these big separation zones um, coming into major harbors: Boston, New York, uh, Portland. Um, you know stuff like that and typically uh the ships are commercial ships are required to keep on in the proper way so you have a inbound separation zone and uh outbound um and i have um been around when ships have collided because they they did not meet the separation zone yes those are very important and it's good for us too because um we typically want to keep out of that that whole area if possible especially in reduced visibility mm -hmm. uh, so what else we have for tonight who's going sailing this weekend i'm going with you <laughs> you are water today Oh, oh, did you send me an email today? No, okay. I've got a few people sailing this with me this weekend, and I I saw that I had another email come in today. I've got some people both Saturday and Sunday. So um, so all right. So if there's no other um comments, questions, or whatever, I got we'll some. Talk. This is Dan. <laughs> What's that? I got some. So we were oh. sailing uh uh was with uh, with uh, Alex uh, the other day, and we're going across down by going up to um, his new place. He's going to put the boat, and we were looking at different symbols, and we we're trying to, to determine the symb symbiology on the electronic charts is so different sometimes. Like instead of these these cans, I see T's, um, and trying to locate, you know, trying to find the differences between the the, the actual designations from the NOAA designations. And the electronic chart designations uh, were pretty confusing to me. I totally agree. Um, when I'm using electronic charts, I try to, um, oftentimes they have uh, options, what you can do that. And I really recommend try to do the, um, the you know, the government chart symbols and location. There's, I read a thing just a couple of days ago that the government is trying to make symbols and abbreviations standard, um, especially with all the electronic charting and mapping that we have today. Um, you know, it gets really confusing that, you know, you, if you're in a different area. So if they, they're trying to make it so all government agencies who use the, you know, FL means flash and F means fixed or whatever. Um, it's not always possible to do, but they're trying to do it as much as possible. Yeah, Dan, you usually, have a, you usually have a menu on your uh, electronic charts to to pick. Uh, you know, do you want to use a NOAA or or uh, the several Correct. other charts you can choose from, and the symbols will change. Oh, okay, that's cool. Yeah, so to try to pick the NOAA symbols. Right. Um, Craig, I was, I was just thinking that um, when you were showing different types of buoys and whatnot, there's also the black white. The black what? The black danger. white, the danger signs. Right, danger. Isolated they, danger buoys. So we didn't cover that. Oh, I don't have any pictures of. Yes, they they're definitely. There's a whole bunch of other buoys. I did not. I did not go over lights. Some of those are covered in my. Um, in my PDF, I'll try to post the PDF. There's also a nice booklet. Um, can you see this? No, it's blocked mm. by uh, your background. Oh, there so it is. Okay. So um, there's a. Um... <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 
Oh, that, that, you can pick this up in navigation uh, in uh, like West Marine and the Coast Guards and the stuff like that. Um, th this is a, actually a very good booklet. It has an awful lot of the things that I have on it. It also has things like going under bridges and, you know, depth gauge, depth, you know, you know, uh, air clearances and a lot of the different symbols. So it, it goes in a little bit more detail. I, I, you know, we only had so much time here, so I was um, cutting down some of the things. There's also some very good symbols going into harbors and talking about the preferred channels. And then there's different ways of showing it, as you just somebody pointed out, that, you know, talking on what it looks like on a nautical chart or on a map or on different types of electronic charts. And then Frank pointed out, yeah, try to use the um, the NOAA symbols as much as possible. Keep it simple. I have a question about the um, sound si signals. Um, can you go over the blasts again? It, it, one short blast is I'm leaving you to port. Is yes. that right? Yeah. Yes. I like to, the way I remember it, Sue Ellen, is one blast means I'm turning right. Two blasts means I'm turning left. Um, okay. It's the, it's the same. same thing. Is yeah. I'm leaving you to one blast as I'm leaving you to port, or um, you know, it's I I learned it is one blast I'm turning right, two blasts yeah. I'm turning left, yeah, and then three blasts I'm backing up, or yeah. I've got my engines reverse. You may not actually be backing up; you may be slowing down. Uh -huh. with three blasts you know like a big ship takes a it can take you know several minutes to start backing up after they right okay. well and if you listen if you listen to channel 13 you won't most of these days you don't hear the horn signals very often because they give it electronically uh -huh. they'll do them on the radio um they'll go like uh thomas hardy to um to the Bonnie Lee uh, uh single blast and you answer yeah. two blast one blast oh <laughs> you, they mean they say actually that? blast the horns anymore, usually. Oh, Frank, they say a single blast, they say the words? They'll they, say, yeah, they'll, they'll, they'll say, say oh. I'm passing you on one blast or I'm passing you on okay. one. Okay. They'll just say one. Yeah. One. I'm just okay. going to pass you on one. That means, on one. Okay. Yeah. Frank, did you say channel 13 or 16? 13. That's no, normally on 13. Is 13 the hailing channel? 16 is the hailing channel, but you're not supposed to be having a lot of discussion except in emergencies. Okay. So do, you, do you tell people? I'll get up it? there. Okay. Uh, Bonnie Lee, this is a free spirit on 16. And Frank says, this is Bonnie Lee. Hey, Bonnie Lee, let's go to channel 13 or 72 or whatever channel. Okay. So we're not supposed to talk any more than to establish a channel. I see. Now, if you're talking to the Coast Guard, um, especially in an emergency situation. Now you can continue to talk on 16. After they get the key information, the Coast Guard will ask you to go to like channel 22A, 22 alpha. Um, but they'll keep you on 16 until they're pretty comfortable that you know what's happening. And then they'll also tell you, if you don't hear me on 22, go back to 16. I'd, I'd like to say something about those isolated danger buoys. Okay. Um, if you see one, there's two of them in Hull, right as um, about a half a mile from uh, east of Hull Gut as you come heading over towards Brian Hur's mooring. Um, and it, they're very confusing. If you see a black buoy, you better get your chart out because they're not, um, there doesn't seem any rhyme or reason of where they put the buoy as, as um, in regards to where the obstruction is. And um, so there's a buoy marking inner seal rock and the buoy is outside of the rock. And then outer seal rock, the buoy is on the inside of the rock. So- oh, Yeah, that's-, that's I, actually, that I see a lot of people in my life, <laughs> they hit that outer seal rock because they go outside the buoys. Is that outer seal? Outer seal, yeah. I'm looking at it now, is it, is it a black? Uh... Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, and it's got two black balls on the top. Right, that's that's yeah. Technical. 
Yeah. 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 There's also, there's also a, a, a structure, uh, one of those movies in the Hans Harbor. You know, any day you're out in for a cruise, you want to take a ride over there, uh, Craig, you can, you know. Into, into, in what harbor? In the Hans. Okay. Out there off of President's Road. So yeah. If you see one of those buoys, check your chart. Is that what you're saying? Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Yep. <laughs> Don't apply <laughs> logic. Don't apply any logic to the location <laughs> of the buoy. <laughs> There's cardinal yeah, buoys. Too. I'm sure there is, but I haven't been able to figure it out. The cardinal yeah. buoys will tell you which which direction is the safe one to pass. Yeah, there's in so, in some place they have cardinal buoys too. You're right, and um, yeah, the one in Nahant is another classic one. There's you know Nahant's a big wide open harbor, but there's especially there's two different danger buoys, and one of them is uh, the spindle over there is very dangerous, similar to like in Hull. Yeah. In Hull, you look, you think you're in yeah, I'm in great shape, not to worry. And all of a sudden you stop quickly. Right. And that's rock. You hit, yeah, just yeah, yeah. When you stop quickly, that means you hit rock. <laughs> the second town where um Bowditch Ledge collapsed, the coast got put two white danger buoys flanking both the right and left sides. And if you go between a speedboat can go behind, but if a sailboat goes between there at low tide, you're not going to be that good. Yeah. We constantly look for those because they give it plenty of berth to stop at what port. Yeah. You don't, you don't want to hit boatage. Yeah. 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 You talk are you talking about boatage ledge? Well, boatage ledge collapse. Yes. Yeah. So that used to be a, a nice big huge. Oh, it's huge. Uh, yeah. Now you can see it at low tide, you can see the, what's left. But the Coast Guard put two white danger buoys, one to seven, one to port. Well, yeah, I, I love those, um, you know, white over orange danger buoys that are on both sides of it. So that sucks you right into it. <laughs> yeah. Where on the chart is that? Where is that, Jeff? Salem Sound. Oh, Salem. Salem. Salem Sound. Heading over towards Misery. If Island. you're coming in between Misery Island and and Baker's Island, it's basically right in the main ship channel. I know it's a little bit off of it, um, but if you're going in there, most of us don't take that big ship channel. We go go right towards, um, um, you know, down down towards um, uh, Haste Rock over there, and. Um, and it takes you directly over that. So. Yeah, that's to be avoided at all costs. Yeah. So, um, good way to get in trouble. Yes. Yeah. Um, and by the way, when you're, I, you know, I've given a thing on Open CPN, and I do um, do routes all over the place. And boy, when you put a route in. Um, Follow it in, you know, in a pretty detail on your chart to make sure that you're not going to go there. And by the way, that Bowditch ledge does not say that it's bare at low tide. It's, it's, it says five feet or something like that, doesn't it? You got, you got to know it's there. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, yeah. God. And if you have never sailed there before, you just see... Two buoys, and actually, I'm looking at the chart right now. It says five feet. Well, see, anybody can sail over five feet unless it's dead low tide. Yeah, at low tide, you can. The seagulls are sitting on the rock. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Whoops. <laughs> yeah. Uh, anybody else have some things about navigation? Things that would be paying worth paying attention. Uh, some of these have beak have radio beacons on them. Is that correct? Oh yeah, some of them. Some of the um, old sound um, signals, you have to push a certain radio. Um, what's it? 80, what's 81 or 83 or something like that. You have to key the mic five times and then it will, uh, the sound buoys will blast for the next 30 yeah. minutes or something like that. And that's on, is that, and that's on 16? No, no, I think that's on eight, channel 83, I think. Um, don't hold me to that. I can't remember if that's the right number or number. Okay. I was looking at the at the practice chart uh, that comes with the, you know, the one for the course that's yeah. published. Uh, and I saw some that had radio locator, non-directional non beacons on them. 
in, in just a trans transmitter in the 300 and something range. Uh, do a lot of boats have uh, automatic direction finders on them? Um, very few boats have automatic direction finders other than this thing called a compass. <laughs> okay. Is that the is that the reason for the beacon on the on the the radio beacon on the on the buoy? Yeah, some of the uh, sometimes if you're on radar, they will all of a sudden um, show a Morse code of a of a letter, typically of the letter of whatever it's guarding. So, uh, and there are a few of them. I don't use my radar often enough. And I have certainly have seen it, but it's uh, I you know I can't give you examples very well here. Mm. I, I don't feel comfortable giving you examples. Um. Oh, Raycons. I'm looking two twenty four. Yeah. Yeah, you can. Uh, I got the elder chair. I'm just looking that up. Oh yeah. Well, the Raycons are typically the old days. Um, they were Raycons, which were, um, before you had GPS, a Raycon would be a beacon that if you had a radio di direction finder, um, you could hone in on that Raycon or any, um, any radio signal where you knew where the transmitter was. And yeah. you could say, okay, that Raycon is in that direction. So if you know that that Raycon's right at the entrance to the harbor, um, you know there. Or if you got two Raycons that are roughly right angles to each other, you can plot your position because you say one is over here to my left and the other one's, you know, right. more or less dead ahead or dead right behind me. And where those two lines cross is approximately where you are. If you have three of them, um, then right. you kind of draw a circle around the three of them. And that that is your, you know, your error here, hopefully somewhere in that that triangle that you just created. Oh. Very few people use Raycons anymore that I know of. I used mm -hmm. to use them all the time before uh, GPS. Actually, that was before Loran. <laughs> oh, you're dating. What's a, what's a Loran? <laughs> oh, I used to use those. <laughs> Yeah. yeah, I use it for many years. Mm -hmm. Rand was in the book and it exercises, but it wasn't on the test. So. <laughs> well, it's worth yeah. knowing that stuff. And if you're going for a captain's license um, or some of the advanced navigation courses, it's worth using, le learning. It's so used quite a bit in what, South America? Something like that. They? Still yeah. used, yeah. yeah. Are, are, those, are, those, are the transmitters still active? I didn't think they were. No, if we, if we lose GPS, they can turn them back on. It's old they, I, they, yeah, you see a lot fewer of them. Um, and unfortunately, I know like when I used to do deliveries up and down the East Coast, you know, you're, you're offshore and one radio beacon is almost directly in front of you and the other one's almost directly behind you. So if you're off by five degrees, you could be off by five miles. You know, it's it was tough to do it. Um, you know, they're good when you have you know multiple signals from different angles. Uh, so, I use, so, go ahead. So I take it most boats don't have automatic direction finders on them for, for radio beacons. No, I never had an automatic. I had a radio direction finder. I've used the handheld ones and the desk mounted ones. I like the handheld ones way better because you can do your own correction. You know, it's got a compass in it. You just kind of point it. What you what the direction finders did is they look for the node. You have a directional antenna. And if I point it directly at the radio signal, I hear nothing. I turn a little bit to one side and I start to hear something. And then I turn a little bit to the other side and I start to hear it again. So what you do is record the two um, magnetic directions and theoretically the signal, the radio signal is coming from directly between them. So you add them up and divide by two and you say, okay, that signal is over there. 
then you do the same thing with another signal off to the one side or the other. And that's how you get lines of position. So, so that's the manual type. You don't, you guys don't have the type like we use in our aircraft that, that has automatic points to the station. Um, as far as I've, I've never known any private boat. You know, a lot of police boats, a lot of police cars, uh, Coast Guard, and that sort of stuff will have um, automatic direction finders. Okay. And the Coast Guard and the uh, like to use that because if you don't know where you are then they can, and it's it's four little antennas up on top of uh, vertical antennas, and they can uh, get the direction from which your signal is coming from almost instantly. So okay. at least they know in which direction. Now, if there's another asset out there, another Coast Guard boat out there somewhere else, and he's got another fix, now you've got two angles, so now you can say, okay, we have a pretty good fix. I see. But that, so that's up on the VHF frequencies. That's on the VHF, right. Okay. Now, but it doesn't have to be VHF. It's any radio signal. If right. you know where the transmitter is and you can pick it up, you can get a direction finder on it. Well, Dan, when you were on my boat Friday, you heard that. You heard that radio chatter. I bet they were trying to triangulate on those uh, transmissions. Oh, that's that's true. Remember that's that? Yeah, I'd like to triangulate on those guys too. <laughs> worst, worst language and and uh, disrespect I've ever heard. <laughs> oh, they would never use bad language on the VHF. Oh, <laughs> I couldn't believe it. Yeah, some, some kids got on on the radio. It was pretty bad. Oh yeah, forty five year old kids. <laughs> yeah, when when we used to have the talk about very common up in ski areas. Uh, you get some kids all in once in a while. The, you know, the, the, those of us that work there will get up there. Um, uh, you know, I've got an angle from here. Uh, Frank, give me give me a call when you get your angle. We'll be able to find them. And all of a sudden, they'd go silent. Yeah. <laughs> it worked pretty well. <laughs> so that's not a um, bad idea. Yeah. I'm gonna stop the zero three two on me. How was he on you? <laughs> so, uh, so I'm going to stop the recording, but we can continue doing it uh, discussion. Dan, I haven't been back to the boat since I left that day. Friday. Oh, you still got stuff to do. <laughs> uh, I haven't.